Toyota hasn't exactly joined the electric vehicle revolution. With one EV crossover specifically designed for the market and a few new hybrid models, it is only barely following industry norms and is still committed to the hybrid market it founded. Actually, the company replaced Toyota with Koji Sato, a former Lexus branding officer, earlier this year following a corporate restructure centered on electrification. Toyota was the brand's former CEO and a vocal opponent of electric vehicles. Since Sato was appointed, things have changed dramatically as Toyota softens its attitude on electric vehicles and even makes suggestions that a new electric architecture is on the horizon. However this week, Toyota went a step further and announced a revamp of its production and part-making procedures for electric vehicles. By 2026, Toyota will introduce a more robust, energy-dense nickel-cobalt-manganese lithium-ion battery with a range of 621 miles and a fast charge time of 20 minutes, as part of what could be considered a technical roadmap. Although Toyota has a strategy for its lower-end models as well, these BZ4X adjacent 10CM batteries will only be used in high-end luxury or performance vehicles. Toyota will incorporate this LFP technology into upcoming BEV models using the bipolar structure battery found in the Aqua and Crown hybrid cars sold in the Japanese market, claiming a 20% gain in cruising range and a 40% cost savings over the present BZ4X. Nickel series bipolar lithium ion batteries will soon be available in a high-performance variant, which indicates the prospect of Toyota producing affordable, high-performance EVs. By 2028, these batteries, which have a high nickel cathode that boosts range by 10% while cutting prices by 10%, will be in use in real applications. Toyota claims that these developments are already in the works, however business leaders stress the need of inventing for the long term. According to their EV roadmap, Toyota believes that solid-state batteries are unquestionably the way of the future. The business is speeding up the development of solid-state batteries in part because of a technological breakthrough that overcomes the long-standing challenge of battery durability, but also because solid-state batteries, according to the company's calculations, will increase range by about 20%. Stacking all of these percentages on top of one another makes it difficult to measure their effects, and the corporation only offers instances of improvements rather than concrete figures. It nevertheless shows that Toyota is well aware of how swiftly it must increase its EV reach. Toyota will need to redesign and expand its manufacturing facilities in order to do this from a chassis and battery perspective. The business intends to adopt Giga Casting Technology high-pressure aluminum die casting equipment for its future EV platforms in order to cut down on the sheer number of sheet metal components, citing enhanced profitability. Despite early model production quality difficulties, Tesla has undoubtedly had success with this production strategy. Toyota claims that it will use a self-propelling assembly line in place of a conveyor system for future electric vehicle chassis manufacture. With a substantial portion of the process becoming automated, this method will increase model flexibility at each plant by enabling mass-produced models to move independently from one process to the next. Significantly fewer personnel will be required for production, according to Toyota. Along with the announcement from this week, Toyota also announced that it is building a new battery research lab in Michigan. The Japanese company will invest $50 million in York Township close to Ann Arbor to build its North American R&D headquarters, which will be dedicated to battery evaluation. It makes perfect sense to establish manufacturing routes in North America, a battery factory in North Carolina and three-row electric SUV assembly in Kentucky given the current situation of the Inflation Reduction Act tax credit provisions. However, Toyota claims that the R&D center will also improve the company's ability to service North American customers. Even within a single state, driving requirements and charging practices differ significantly, however the American approach to electric cars has, up to now, been centered on striking a compromise between long range and high performance. To produce a product that is competitive, Toyota will need to comprehend these subtleties. The company's regional development strategy will also benefit greatly from being able to assess the U.S. charging infrastructure firsthand, according to the press statement. Toyota's stance on EVs is rapidly changing, however there are still some elements of the past corporate culture visible, as the company devoted a sizable section of their presentation to hydrogen and e-fuels. 
Toyota is pursuing carbon neutral biofuels in the same way as European automakers like Porsche, even though its strategy for fuel cell electric cars and hydrogen is mostly based on commercial vehicles. Toyota claims that some nations or regions with difficult to meet electricity demands, like Brazil or India, would be ideal for e fuel technology. These nations or regions are now testing hydrogen, synthetic fuels, and bioethanol fuels from renewable energy sources. Toyota intends to deploy the right vehicle in the right place at the right time, according to the report's conclusion, which reiterates the company's long-standing talking point. This is not surprising given that Toyota has been the best-selling automaker in the world for three years in a row, but in order to sell EVs, Toyota will need to do more than just increase production and develop stronger batteries. The right amount of affordability and natural enthusiasm is required, particularly in the US. Meanwhile, let's dig deeper how nickel cobalt and iron phosphate batteries compare. Energy density. Pound per pound, nickel cobalt batteries continue to have a higher energy density than iron phosphate batteries. There is less room for everything else in an EV the heavier and more volume consuming the battery is. In some circumstances, a larger, heavier battery results in less interior room and legroom. Compared to their LFP battery competitors, nickel cobalt batteries have a longer range and a faster rate of recharge. Tesla, on the other hand, is actively promoting the usage of LMFP batteries, a more sophisticated iron phosphate battery that makes use of manganese. According to reports, these batteries enhance range 15% to 20% while being almost as inexpensive as LFP batteries. These cathode developments might close the energy density gap, improving the viability of iron phosphate for long-distance electric vehicles. The LFP battery technology is being used by researchers to create TEM-3P batteries. Aluminum, magnesium, and zinc are used in place of iron in the new battery type. The possibility of an EV battery with a 435 mile range that is still less expensive than nickel cobalt has been suggested by scientists. By 2023, Tesla may introduce EVs powered by M3P in a few markets. Safety When overcharged during recharging or damaged in an accident, all lithium ion batteries have the potential to burn quite intensely. Statistics show that fires are incredibly uncommon, yet because of how difficult they are to put out, they frequently make the news. The various battery topologies have various thermal runaway temperatures, though. When battery temperature rises above a predetermined level, thermal runaway occurs, which leads to battery ignition. The thermal runaway of a standard nickel cobalt 10MC battery occurs about 410 degrees Fahrenheit, according to data from Battery University. However, around 518 degrees Fahrenheit, LFP iron phosphate batteries develop thermal runaway. Nickel cobalt batteries have the potential to heat up to the point of thermal runaway, whereas iron phosphate batteries remain stable at 100% charge. The majority of scientists and designers believe that charging a nickel cobalt battery to 80% and stopping there is the safer course of action. The increased energy density of nickel cobalt is largely mitigated by this factor. Overall, M3P battery offshoots and iron phosphate LFP batteries are safer. Longevity According to research, LFP batteries could have a substantially longer lifespan than NMC batteries. Researchers from Sandy and National Laboratories conducted tests in 2020 and discovered iron phosphate batteries frequently had a lifespan of 3-0 to 4-0-0-0 cycles. After that, the battery's capacity to retain more than 80% of their initial charge was lost. Nickel cobalt batteries reached similar deterioration after 1-0 to 2-0-0-0 cycles. The information isn't exactly as clear cut as it might appear at first. Because the batteries carry less charge, the LFP iron phosphate lifespan won't be twice as long as the nickel cobalt lifespan in terms of years. In a certain amount of time, this translates to more frequent cycles discharge and recharge. However, researchers think LFP batteries have longer lifespans in general. Cold weather charging. Iron phosphate batteries fall short when it comes to charging and operating in the cold compared to nickel cobalt batteries. And MC batteries are far more resistant to the cold, but LFP iron phosphate batteries may struggle in warmer conditions. With that being said, are you in favor of full BEVs or you are still rooting for hybrids? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. 
For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.